Hello, hello, I'm Li Hao. So the last video we talked about Svelte Compiler API. In this video, we're going to talk about Svelte Preprocess. So um, in the Svelte Compiler API, we learned that we have a function called Svelte.compile, which takes in the Svelte code in string that you write, and it will return an object that has like JavaScript and CSS, which you can um, use it and write in a file or use it somehow, right? So um, you, you take Svelte code that you write and it transforms to Svelte, to JavaScript code. But sometimes the Svelte code you write, it's not actually a Svelte code per se. For example, uh, Svelte expects that the code you write is in normal CSS code and also like normal JavaScript code and HTML. But sometimes you are lazy or you want to use some tools that you have, for example, like TypeScript, or you want to write a CSS or less instead of normal CSS, or you want to use Pug instead of normal HTML, then you want to pre-process your code before you pass that code that you have into the spell or compile function. So imagine your code, whatever you write, Pug, CSS, CSS less, uh, TypeScript, or coffee script, the code you write over here on the on the on your on the left. So this is my right, but I know this will be reflected on your left. Um, whatever you write, you have to pass you have to transform them into normal Svelte code, which is just HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And then use Svelte.compile to transform that into JavaScript and CSS. Alright, so this step from whatever you write to HTML, JavaScript, and CSS, um, you can do it yourself, you can just transform yourself, or you can use Svelte preprocess, which is a helper function that um, extracts out um, pieces. Uh, it, will, it will break your code into pieces, into like CSS, uh, uh, not CSS, it will break into the style tags, script tags, and markup, everything that you write. And it will break them down into pieces so that you can... Um, so that you can transform each part individually if you want, right? So let's take a look at um, an example over here. So here we have the code that we, we just written for a Svelte compiler API. So we, we read all the code from a Svelte code uh, from a file and we pass that file directly into our Svelte compiler, right? So say for example, right now let's throw, remove everything from the Svelte comp uh, component that we have uh, that except we just left with a normal script tag, style tag, and some HTML, right? So first thing is maybe we don't want to write a script tag. We want, um, let's see. Okay, let's, let's just try to write some basic CSS, right? Let's state equals, let name equals to, over here I would say, uh, I want to have like a global variable, uh, which I want to be injected when we are, um, by some process, right? So maybe I have a value that I have, I only would know during the compilation process. So here I'm going to replace it with a placeholder like uh, maybe using this, right? So name um, using a percentage sign, okay? So this, as you can see, I have some red underline. You by, by the looks of it, you know that this is not a valid JavaScript code, right? You can't have a variable name that starts with a percentage. So, um, and then we have HTML code. So here I'm going to have a div tag that, that reads a name, right? So here we want to um, take this code, read this piece of code, and then we want to process it. We want to transform it into a normal JavaScript, uh, sorry, a normal Svelte code, and then only pass it to Svelte compile. Because if I just take this, read this code out of this file and pass it to Svelte compiler, uh, what you see that is that it will have a parse error because the code we just written is not a valid JavaScript code. So let's see. So here we read this file out. It's a normal code. So what we can do is we can um, process. I'm going to have a new variable called process code equals to Svelte code dot replace uh, this thing into Oops. Into valid string. So here I'm gonna say a hel hello world. Okay. Now uh if you try to look at this process code, you realize that we have replaced this 
percentage into a string and hopefully that will be that will end up with a valid JavaScript code in the script tag. So if we run this now, hold on. Okay, we need to pass this in as well. I run this now. Replace. Let's see what do I missed. Um. Okay, so most likely we don't have CSS. That's why this is this is throwing an error. Okay, now we run everything works. If we come over here and take a look at the output JavaScript code, we take a look at the code over here. You see that the name is now replaced to hello world and everything still works, right? So um, of course this is you. So this is the essence of preprocessing. You have your code. You run through a function. Uh, in this case, our function that we're gonna run through is replace like name, and then we pass the preprocessed code um, to the Svelte compiler. Right. So sometimes it's not as straightforward as this. Sometimes your code itself, the entire piece of code, is is written in like say TypeScript or CoffeeScript that you can't really uh, do like just a normal replace. You would have to go through like their compiler to transpile it out to just normal JavaScript, then you probably would want to have this function called a preprocess. So Svelte compiler has a function called preprocess. That's again taking your string and taking a list of preprocessors. Okay. Uh it could be an array or it could be an object. And this will again return us a process code. Okay, let me comment this out. Okay, it returns the process code. So here in a preprocess, what you what you pass in is an array of objects. So each of these objects is called a preprocessors. And this over here you can um uh, this object itself can be a um can have three properties. One is the markup or the um style or the script so individually each of this is a is a function that takes in the code just in the script tag and transform it out right so uh what is so let's take a one example that i'm gonna do uh here i have this you know we, we said about this is 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 uh have in our script tag but we also have the same text over here in html so we want to handle only the case in the, we only want to trans, uh, replace it. Okay, so let's, let's do this. We only want to replace if it's in the script tag, but not replace it if it's in the HTML. So what we can do here is that we can't really rely on replacing all anymore, but rather we have to come into a preprocess, sir, a uh, preprocess part, and we only do, we only transform in the script part. So here it takes in a content, which is the codes. So it's a function. So this is a function. So take in content and we're going to replace the content, right? So we're going to use the same code over here and do a replace. And now we, then that's it. That's like a simplest preprocessor that I can think of. Now you have a preprocessed code and you pass it to the compiler. And now we run it through. Hold on, uh, must be a string. Okay, I think preprocess code is, uh, it's a promise. Okay, now I need to. Uh, okay, so I have. Dot then. Uh, value. Okay, I'm gonna copy all this. Shove all this in. So value.code is the code. So value is an object that has a code as well as a source map so that um, source map can work, uh, uh, can map back to the original code before you do a preprocessing. Okay, so uh, for now, we just, for simplicity, we just pass in the code in. Uh, let's, 
What's going on? It's, oh, I need to return this. Right. Uh, and what you return is actually going to be um, object as well. And you should return uh, uh, object with content. Right, so it says over here that, oh, sorry, not contents, code. It says over here that your preprocessor should return um, a uh, it should return an object with a code property that, that represents um, the transform code. Right, so here let's run again and, and we are done and let's take a look at the output. We, s we have hello world being transformed over here. At the same time, in the text content, you still see like the normal percentage percentage name. Right, so um, if you try to log out from here, you try to um, console out from here, you notice that the content will just only uh, having the contents in the script text. So this is how you would probably use the Svelte preprocessors because um, then you probably would have to handle like uh, like, and, and so, so you can write your own preprocessors if you like to, right? So it's not just about contents. What you get over here is also attributes. So attributes is all the attributes that's available on the script um, element here. So for example, uh, sometimes, you know, um, we don't want to transform all the script text. Uh, it depends on maybe say a language. Is it a TypeScript or coffee? or uh, you have some other things like context goes to special, uh, things like that. And you only want to do a preprocessing for um, code that has this attribute, script tag that has only this attribute. If you want to do that, then uh, what you can do is you can come over here and check the uh, attributes, right? So say for example, uh, maybe I have an attribute say name equals to special. So this attribute is what we're going to read from this attribute and actually we're going to replace percentage percentage name with this name. Right? So for some reasons, you already know it, but you just want to use it over here and you want to replace everything from here to here. So what we can do is we can't um, check attributes uh, dot name this will give us a value. So this will, I'm going to replace it over here instead. And this is the string itself, right? And uh, we can't just put in a string. If we just put in a string like this, what you'll get is, um, what you'll get is special, like, like a variable, right? But what you want is actual, like just a string. So we're going to do a JSON string GFI as in a string literal that, that wraps with a quotes sign. So now if we dry, run again, now we see our code will have name equals to special. Right, so here you can read um, attributes and in most of the times, um, it will also, some people would like to do is it will check, say for example, attributes dot type uh, language is TypeScript. Only then we do some transformation or else we just leave it alone things like that right so you also, you could probably see some examples over here as well like if it's if it's attribute this language is says then we we return we don't do anything if it's not says we don't do anything and the rest will be like preprocessing for for says right, so here um uh you see that um this is how you would write your own preprocessors and code is just one of the um uh, what's that? Uh, property that you can return. You can also return one thing that's called dependencies. So here, op optional array of dependencies. So dependencies should be an array of files that um that you return from pre uh, from the process code. Right here, process code actually will have not just um code. Uh, you can also have uh, dependencies. Right, this will be an array that combine all the dependencies for all the preprocessors. So, um, in our case, we don't really need uh, this. This array is useless to us, but in some case, it's useful for 
uh, your bundlers, for example, roll up or webpack, because they want to know like what your file is depending on. Right? It's not just depending on the current file itself, it's also maybe depending on some config file, some other files. So for example, if you're um, if you're writing a preprocessors and you uh, uh, you read the name, like this name from some files, then you probably also have to specify the 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 path of the file so that every time when someone changes that file, um, your bundler will know that you will have to um, go come over here again and run through the pre-process again and update so that you will pre-process again and up, uh, have an updated name for your component, right? updated value for this name. Right? So dependencies will be that array that you specify like what other files will depend on. So another example would be, say you are using Tailwind, you pre-process Tailwind uh, in your CSS and you will want to specify tailwind config as your dependencies. So every time when you change the tailwind config, like changing like the font, some colors, then the your bundle would know that, oh, um, all the files that are depending on that config will have to be recompiled, have to be run through the preprocess again, and, and that's where this dependencies array will be useful for you. So uh, we, we've seen how, um, how we can do with scripts, but it will be the same for style and a markup. Right, so that I will not go too uh, deep on that anymore. I'm gonna, not going to show any examples. Um, so this is this felt compiled a preprocess is only uh, useful if you are like me that write this code and show it an example. But most of the case, this preprocess was preprocess function will be called the same way as how the Svelte compiled the compile will be called by the plugin for your bundlers, say for example, Svelte Rollup plugin or like Svelte Loaders, right? So um, in in those loaders or plugins, usually they have a field called preprocess that you can pass in preprocessors. So that is where you can pass in this object into that option, right? So uh, it's still useful to know that um, how to write like one preprocessors and you can try it out with a Svelte compiler and, and try it out yourself. Um, but usually you wouldn't want, you most cases you wouldn't call preprocess um, directly and you would let your uh, uh, bundlers plugins like Rollout Svelte plugin or Svelte loaders to do that for you, right? So that will be all for this video. If you learned something um, or give me a thumbs up if you like this video and you have any questions that you are familiar um, of, you, you're not confused about, comments down below, ask any questions you have, shoot me any questions. And as always, subscribe to my channel so that you get notified when next one is out. So see ya, bye bye.